Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanji and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use the CMC share trading platform to buy and sell shares, ETFs, listed investment companies, all those types of things. Now, if you've not heard of CMC, it is a British company that has set up an Australian operation where everyday Australians can buy and sell shares on the Australian Stock Exchange or also on international stock exchanges as well. The thing that attracted me was essentially the $0 brokerage for your first trade for around $1,000 or under $1,000 every day. Now that's quite attractive, especially if you wanna ease yourself into the share market and minimize your transaction costs or eliminate your transaction costs altogether. I will show you how to do that in this video, how to buy shares for free essentially on a proper chess sponsored account. So naturally the first thing you'd wanna do is set up your account. I won't go into too much detail here. You wanna set up a share trading account, not a CFD account. If you do set up a CFD account, all the best. I'll probably do a video in the future when I also have learned how to do CFD and my journey on CFD trading. But for now, what we're talking about here is purely a share investing account, a very simple share investing account. For an individual, you can decide whatever the type it is, but. I would set up an individual account. Now, once you've set up your account, go ahead and log in, obviously. You will be seen with this market summary page. It is busy and I think it's because they wanna give you information so you feel like you're in control. The reality is you're not in control and all the information in the world is not gonna help you with that. I'll be honest, I don't spend a lot of time on this page because usually if I'm going into trade, I know exactly what I'm buying and it's usually an ETF or a basic equity. I'm not really trying to be informed by what's going on in the broader market because I have a pretty standard strategy of either a weekly or monthly purchase of probably an ETF or a normal company. So at this point, I'll now just call out that thing around the accounts that you have set up because this is important because I imagine one of the first questions you're going to be asking me is, Sanji, how do I get my money to CMC to then actually buy shares on the share market? That's a good question. So to clarify what that is, you go to account and then you go to transfer funds. And in there, you will see along the top how to deposit. Click on that and you will see there your trading name, your BSB and account number. This is the account that you need to send money from your normal everyday bank account into which CMC can then use to go and buy shares for you. So it's not intuitively or obvious, but this is basically it. This is the account. Now it takes one business day to make a transfer. And it's not like one business day, but if you do it sort of just around midnight or before midnight, you can make it happen. They really are very strict around it ha takes one full business day to actually make the transfer. I don't know why and when they can make it go faster. Could be a compliance thing, could be a money laundering thing. I don't know, but Basically, if you need to buy some shares, give yourself a day to actually make the money arrive in your trading account. Because the other thing about CMC is CMC will not do the trade for you unless you have the money sitting in your account. The second thing to set up is your withdrawal account. This is where if you wanna take money completely out of CMC, you wanna sell your shares and you wanna take money out, you need to set up this account which is separate from your settlement account because you can't actually access your ANZ settlement account directly. It won't appear on your ANZ app if you happen to be an ANZ customer. The only way to take money out of CMC once you've sold your shares is to have this external bank account set up and to then tell them to take your money out of your settlement account and send it to that external bank account. So once you're across those two bank accounts, your deposit and your extraction account, then you can spend a bit of time wandering around. The first thing I would say is probably go to products. And this is where you can get an idea of the di different things you can actually buy through CMC. So equities is just another word for shares. These are the actual comp equity ownership that you can have in a company like BHP, Commodore Bank, CSL, Macquarie Bank, all the usual suspects. That's what equity means. So there's 2,400 companies you can buy shares in on the Australian Stock Exchange via CMC. Then there's ETFs and ETPs, exchange traded funds and exchange traded products. That's where you'll go if you want to find your VASs, your beta shares, VGS, all of them are in there. Then you've got some other stuff that I myself don't use and interest rates, if you do want to buy bonds, that's where bonds are. So things like Australian government bonds, corporate bonds, Qantas bonds, they're all in there. So if you do know what you want to buy, let's say you want to buy something like VAS, 
bang, go to strand, shares, or BHP, what I would do is just go into the top and type it in, in the search instruments section, VAS. So once you get to the VAS page, you can get a general idea of what's on here. They've got your usual trend on the bottom right of the top of the page, which just shows you, you know, how VAS has been performing, but it's pretty much performing similar to the Australian Stock Exchange. But if you do want to see some latest news, you can scroll down to latest news, get a bit of an idea in terms of their distribution amounts, various things. I'm not going to comment a lot here because I feel like if you are going to buy VAS, I would have hoped you've done your research already. And you can see some videos I've done in the past, but you've done your research probably on the Vanguard webpage and other sources. So once you get to the buy page, it's basically asking you, what do you want to buy? How much of it do you want to buy? And at what price do you want to buy at? Because that's basically the components of a transaction is the units, the thing you want to buy, the units, the amount of things you want to buy, the price at which you want to buy it at, plus the brokerage cost, and that will dictate the total cost. So here you can see if you picked VAS or whatever you wanted to put in there, it says VAS, you want to buy it, the actual value or quantity. Now this is the first decision point you have. You can say you want to buy 10 units of VAS, or you can say you want to buy a certain value of VAS. So say you want to meet this criteria to not pay brokerage, so you only want to spend $1,000 on this transaction, you can actually click on value and you can say $1,000. Then you get to the instructions bit. This is actually where you decide how much you want to pay for it or how much you want CMC to go out and look to pay for this transaction on your behalf. You can use limit price at market or conditional order. I've only used at market like a handful, like literally a handful of times in my life. It's meant to be a very aggressive way where it will just execute the trade for you, buying or selling. I think the official definition is three price steps above the best trade price. So you are, you're basically setting yourself up to execute that trade very quickly. What I normally do is I hit limit price and I'll pick the last price or I might pick the highest bid price. So this is where I'll introduce you to the market depth. It's basically showing you all the bids and offers in terms of what's already in the market, in terms of the pipeline for VAS. So you can already see the highest price someone is willing to pay in the market is $83, and there's six units sitting around that. And then the lowest price someone is willing to sell VAS for is $83.20. Now the actual screenshot I'll use for our discussion may be different, but that's the idea there. I usually click last price and because it's blue, these are all actually active hyperlinks. You can just click last price and you can see immediately it's filled it in for $83.12. Like I said, it might be different when I actually put in the screenshot, but that's the idea. Now, you can see along the bottom, it's saying brokerage is going to be zero and your cost is going to be $997.44. So this is basically saying, Hey Sanji, I can put in an order for you for 12 units at $83.12. It's going to cost you $997. We're not going to charge you brokerage because it's under $1,000 in terms of your first purchase of the day. Now, if you wanted to put this trade in, you can hit place order. There'll be a confirmation page and it will go through. Now, once you hit proceed and to make the trade, you just have to be very conscious that once it goes into the system, it can potentially get matched very quickly and go through. Like you may not have time to change your mind. So there's no undo on the share market. I often have said this, just be cognizant of that. That's why I sort of say, if you wanna play around with it, play around with it on the weekend, you do have to make sure you have money sitting in your account, otherwise it won't actually even put a trade into the pipeline. But do it on a weekend, do it outside of hours, and you can get a feel for it. And if you do wanna cancel an order, this is where you go to account, you go to open orders, and you'll see a list in there, and you can click on your order and you can click cancel and you can get it out of there. So it will then cancel the order and it won't go through. That's especially if you've done it on the weekend and you've forgotten all about the fact that you've put into the pipeline. Now that is pretty much everything you need to know, I would say, about buying and selling the shares. Obviously there's a massive component around doing the research, knowing what to buy, knowing when to sell and all of that, but the actual mechanical process of buying and selling shares is pretty much that. Selling is the same, but obviously you need to already own it and it will tell you if you own it and it'll tell you how many units you have to sell with. And then you can do the same thing. You set your price, 
you say proceed and then you wait to see that trade go through. In my next video, I'll show you how to do the same thing using your phone app. That's actually how I do most of my trades is through the phone app and I usually do it during the actual open trading hours, during when I should be doing my full-time job. But I only spend a very small amount of time actually trading, obviously. See you in the next video. Bye for now.